Hi everybody, it's Franny, and before the Speedster goes home tomorrow, there's a couple of things I want to do. I want to get to the transmission, and I want to change the fluid in the transmission today, and the second thing I want to do is take a look at the steering box on this car and see if we can put some more lubricant in it. I think it's running a little bit dry. If you hear a bit of background noise, what you're hearing is the new heater up there. So we got a new heater for the garage. I'm very excited about it. It's going to allow us to work through the winter a bit. It's 240 volts and it does take it a couple of hours to warm up the garage, but it's going to make it really, really comfortable here in, here in the winter. From time to time in the garage, you'll probably see a rag sitting up here on the windshield and probably wondering, why is there a rag sitting up on the windshield? There's a real purpose for that rag being up there. And what it is, is to remind me that the car is on the tender. Now, since I've been starting and stopping the car a bit, the battery runs down a bit when I do that. And so I wanted to make sure I put it on the tender. But the problem is that I too many times have backed the car out with the tender still attached and it's really a bad thing to do and it kind of I've kind of broken a couple of tenders doing that. So the rag that's on the front windshield back there helps remind me of that. So if you're looking for a way if you've done that before, I, I you know <laughs> It's a really embarrassing thing to do. But if you've ever done that before, the rag works really well because it's right in your line of sight and you're like, why is that rag there? There's the reason for that. And I always remember. So that's why you'll see the rags on the car sometimes. In order to do the transmission fluid on this car, I need to get the car kind of warm first. And that's okay because we need to go get some supplies anyways. So next step is going to be to get in the car and drive to the auto parts store place and get some probably high like 80 or 90 weight gear oil for the transmission and then see what we can find for that steering box. It's super duper cold out today. It is like 30 degrees or something out. So holy cow, the car's been in a nice warm garage which is really helpful but it's pretty darn cold out today. I waited till like midday just for it to get above freezing. Yeah. But it's a pretty day out. And we don't have that far to go. Boy, this is just a, such a lovely car to drive. I love 356s. It is the absolute essence of what it's like to drive a car. So manual, no electronics, no nothing. It's just you and a bunch of bits of metal. And that's it. It's pretty sweet. Alright. Alright, let's go get some oil. dead spot either when you when you come out of a gear and you get into the next gear there's no dead spot so that feels good I think the engine's good
Our first step's going to be to crack loose this this uh, fill bolt on the side of the transmission, it's always the first step because if that does not come off, and I hear that these things can be super, super hard to get off sometimes, the last thing we want to do is pull these things, drain all the fluid out, and not be able to get this bolt out and put more fluid back in. That would be a big bummer. So it's right here, this. Oh, sheepers, it's loose. Okay, that's not bad. That was easy. Usually, from what I've read, that these things can be such a bear. I had a big old wrench already, and it just was almost loose, almost hand tight. So, all right. Next, they're going to be to get these guys loose and start to drain what left, what we've got left in the transaxle. I'm going to crack this one loose first. If we can get everything out from this particular one, that'd be awesome. Okay, it wasn't very tight either. Okay, I think it's pretty much there and there we go. We'll go ahead and let that drip for a little bit. I think I'm gonna need to be a little bit careful here. The threads inside this hole look kinda chewed up. This is a pretty deep plug, but gee, they look a little scary. It looks like somebody might have even put a helicoil in there at some point. It's hard to tell. Any rate, just so we don't have any issues, I'm going to put a little um, form of gasket, some Permatex on this to coat these threads a little bit. And hopefully that'll help it seal a little bit as well. And go ahead and put our plug back in. All the way up. Okay, that looks good. I'm really careful with this. And that's all I dare to do on it. With the condition of the threads on this plug, this one has a washer on it. It's a little scary, and I'm pretty certain we got the vast, vast majority of the fluid out. I'm not going to take this plug out because, yikes, that could be a real problem. If that plug doesn't go back in or something goes wrong, then obviously that would be super duper bad. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. I think we're good. I've got this sort of seated well and probably got maybe about... 13, 14 pound feet of torque on it, so I think it should be okay. Next step is just going to be to fill it back up with fluid where you've got our plug out on the side here. We're just going to put fluid in until it comes back out. It's pretty simple. In order to get the fluid back in, I just have a little pump. It's a little push pump that I put on top of the actual oil bottle. It works really, really well. Right, so we put our tube in here. There we go. Eventually. There we go. Okay, I think that's it. We are there. Yay. Yep, we're just over, just running out. That's perfect. We're nice and full. We can put our plug back in now. Oh, sneaky suspicion this wasn't tight because there's nothing for it to tighten up against. There we go. That's all it needs. And there we go. We're all full. We have our plugs back in and our bottom plug back in. That's pretty much it for the transmission. With the transmission done, the last thing I really want to get to is the steering box on this car. Now the, the problem is that it leaks like a sieve and there's really not a tremendous amount we can do about that. It's supposed to put pretty heavy oil in there, like 90 weight gear oil in there, but if the bushings on the bottom are worn at all, it just kind of seeps right through and that's what's going on with this. This is a 1955, so it's awfully old. I think what I'm going to do is put a bit of grease in there just to have some lubricant in there. Because if all the oil drains out, then that can really, that can really just completely destroy that, that whole steering box. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I've removed the spare tire and some of the other bits back here, so we've got some room. One thing I wanted to show you, though, you see this strap here? This is the strap to hold in the spare tire. 
Now you also notice that it is cloth, right? It's like a greenish cloth. On the cabriolets and the coupes, those cars would have a leather strap to hold the wheel in. But this is a speedster, so it has a cloth strap. And I suppose you could argue that that's weight savings or something, but also, of course, the speedsters were the cheaper car back in the day. Obviously, they're worth more than the other cars now, but back in the day, this was the cheapest car. So I always thought this is kind of cool, this cloth strap here. It's kind of neat. So, all right, so all we have to do is pull up our rubber mat here as well. We'll just fold it over there. We're getting into this trapezoidal box that's here. So there's four screws around here. We're going to take this off and get to the steering box. All right. Remove this cover. Okay, so this is our steering box. That's the adjustment for the center. This is a fill here, and this is what we're going to have to get at. Put some grease in. All right, pull that deep plug. Yep, we're pretty low in there. I'm going to add a little bit of grease, and then I'm going to add a little bit of oil. The hope is it'll leak a little less, but still stay lubricated. There we go. I think that's about all the grease I want to put in there. And I'm going to go ahead and top it off with the same oil we used in the transmission. Just to bring it up. There we go. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and put our plug back on. So we seat it down. Don't want to go crazy with it. There we go. Now this guy here is an adjustment to adjust center. Now, oh, another thing. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's a uh, Volkswagen emblem on here. It's my understanding that in 1955, and I could be wrong about this, but I think that in 1955 these cars shared their steering box with the Volkswagens. So that's a Volkswagen steering box. I believe it's pretty much the same one as a Beetle. Okay. So the way this works is you loosen this nut, this catch nut here, and you can tighten down the steering, the center portion of the steering with this. And run it down a little bit and it should tighten the gears up but I think this one's all the way at its end and that's how you take the dead spot out but it feels like that one's pretty much all the way at the end that's too bad so this is this adjustment is just past where it could be so what it does is that it runs these gears together to take the dead spot out in the very center but there's just nothing you can do. It's past its adjustment. That's as far as it's going to go. That's a bummer. All right. Just what happens when these things get old. There we go. So this is about the amount of play that's in there, from there to there. It really shouldn't have any play at all, which is kind of a bummer. And while you're in here, you know, you definitely want to check the condition of this rubber bit here because this is the steering shaft from the steering wheel itself, and this is the steering box, obviously. So if this goes, then it could be very, very bad. You will not have control. You won't have any steering at all. And these things have been known to rip and tear apart after 40 years. So it's good to see that this one's been replaced at some point and looks pretty good. So it looks solid. The tie rod ends here all have lots of grease around them, which is good. They've been serviced lately. And everything else looks really good. This uh, reservoir over here is for the brake fluid. That kind of makes sense, right? But actually, it's not from a 55. The 55 would have had 
like uh, our car does too, a single circuit brake system. So it's a single point of failure. They're actually kind of dangerous. So it's a single master cylinder, single whole thing. And the reservoir sat on top of it and it was down, buried down there. You actually almost had to get under the car to check it out. So a lot of people have replaced this master cylinder with a Volkswagen Beetle dual circuit master cylinder. And when you do that, it comes with this sort of um, external tank here for the brake fluid. And anytime you see that in one of these cars, that's been done. Finally, I'll just go ahead and replace our access cover. Well, that's going to do it for the Speedster. The owner is coming by tomorrow to pick up the car. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope you enjoyed the whole Speedster series, too. It was a lot of fun. It was a pretty cool car to work on. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below, and I'll get right to them. If this is your first time to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notifier thingy my bobber next to it so you can be notified next time we put out videos and we put out lots of kind of cool videos, these vlogs and drives and such. So thank you so, so much. And a special thank you to our Patreon supporters as well. Okay, so until next time, safe travels. Bye.